Hi everyone. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate upgrading Oracle Golden Gate Classic from 12C to 19C. This tutorial aims at demonstrating the procedure of upgrading Oracle Golden Gate Classic from 12C to 19C. At the time of this recording, Oracle Golden Gate 19C is the latest release of this software product. The slide is listing the latest Oracle Golden Gate releases starting from 11G up to 19C. The latest release number for Oracle Golden Gate 11G is 11.2.1. The latest release number for Oracle Golden Gate 12C is 12.3.0.1. There are a few earlier releases, but this slide is displaying only the latest ones. For Oracle Golden Gate 18C, we've got one release. That is 18.1. In this tutorial, we are concentrating on upgrading Oracle Golden Gate from 12C to 19C. In high level, the upgrade goes through the following steps. First, you need to decide which systems will be included in the upgrade. Normally, we care about upgrading both the source and target systems. However, in some special cases, you might be interested in upgrading only the source system or only the target system. And this is supported by Oracle Golden Gate 19C. For example, if the target system is not under your control or in a different entity, you might be interested in upgrading the source system only. Of course, this decision will affect the upgrade steps later. We will see the difference in this tutorial. After making this decision, you need to decide about stopping user DML operations. If the business allows it, it might be better to stop user operations during the upgrade. If the business doesn't allow it, you can avoid stopping user operations. I personally tested upgrading Oracle Golden Gate 12C to 19C without stopping the user activities, and it worked just fine. After deciding on stopping the user DML operations, stop the Golden Gate processes properly and in the correct order. We mean by properly is that you make sure all the data is being processed before shutting down the processes. Start with shutting down the extract, then the pump, and finally the replicator processes. The processes should be stopped even if we want to upgrade the source system only, or the target system only. After stopping the processes, take backup of the Golden Gate homes in the systems that you want to upgrade. Then upgrade Oracle Golden Gate homes in the systems that you want to upgrade. We can upgrade the existing home. No need to uninstall the new release in a separate home directory. After that, we need to decide, should we use the trail file format of the new release or should we keep the current trail file format? Normally, if we are upgrading both the source and the target systems, we let the processes create trail files of the latest release format. If we are upgrading the source system only, we should keep the existing file format release because the target system cannot read from the latest release trail file format unless it is upgraded. The decision made at this point determines which options we should use to start the processes. After the processes are successfully started, allow the application users to resume their operations. Before going to the next slide, I'd like to point out one observation. Some administrators prefer to perform a different approach for upgrading Oracle Golden Gate. Instead of stopping the processes before the upgrade, 
and starting them after the upgrade with the correct options, they prefer to simply delete the processes before the upgrade and recreate them again after the upgrade. Technically speaking, this approach works fine, but personally, I prefer to perform the approach as described in the slide. Obtaining the installation file for Golden Gate Release 19C is easy. You just log into the site edelivery.oracle.com. If you don't have an account, you can create one. Search for Oracle Golden Gate for the platform Linux x86-64 and you should see in the top of the returned result set a line that reads Oracle Golden Gate 19.1.0.0.4 for Oracle on Linux x86-64. At the time of this recording, you will end up with downloading a file named as v98365801.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0
On the target system, we should stop the replicate process. We should stop the replicate even if we are not going to upgrade the golden gate in the target system. But before stopping the replicate, we should make sure that it finished processing the data in the trail files. I will send the status command to the replicate process. The process current status is at EOF, which means it reached to the end of the current trail file. I can safely stop the replicate process now. After stopping the data processing processes, we should stop the managers in each system. After stopping all the processes, it's better to check if a process called server is running from the existing Golden Gate home. This process represents the collector process, which receives the data stream from remote pump processes. In my case, no server process is running from GG home in the source system. Let me do the same checking in the target side. No server process is running in the target system either. I am now good to go for the next step. After stopping the Golden Gate processes, we should take backup of the existing Golden Gate homes. Because I'm going to take the backup of the existing GG home locally, I'd like to see the size of the existing GG home. In my case, the GG home size is 2.7 gigabyte. I have 60 gigabyte free disk space in the system, so I have enough free disk space to take backup of the GG home locally in the system. I will use the tar utility to take backup of the GG home. Then I will move the produce tar file to an external disk. I will do the same in the target system. After taking backup of the Golden Gate homes, we need to extract the installation file of the Golden Gate 19C. I will first create a staging directory locally to extract the installation file into it. This is a staging directory, not the GG home directory. Then I will decompress the installation file into the created directory. Now I will log into the GUI interface of the machine as Oracle.
I will open a terminal window. And change the current directory to the staging directory. Then I will run the installer. The installer options are easy, but you have to be careful and change some default settings. In the first installer window, I am upgrading GG for Oracle 12C database. So I will select the option Oracle Golden Gate for Oracle Database 12C. Installation details window is the tricky window. First, in the software location field, I have to enter the existing Oracle Golden Gate home directory. Otherwise, I will end up to having two Oracle Golden Gate homes installed in the system. Second, I have to unselect the Start Manager checkbox. If I keep this checkbox marked, the existing processes will be deleted. And that's something I definitely don't want to happen. So be careful in this window, please. Enter the existing Golden Gate Home directory and unselect the Start Manager checkbox. When I see this warning message, I just have to click on Yes button. Then click on Install button. We are not done with the installation yet. There is a script that we have to run at the database as sysdba. After logging on to the database as sysdba, run the script ulg.sql. The script must run successfully. Do not proceed with the upgrade if it returns errors. The installation went fine, so I can remove the staging directory now. I should perform the same procedure at the target site. Create a staging directory, extract the installation file, install the software over the existing GG home, and finally run the ULG script as sysdba. After upgrading the GG homes, I can start the manager processes now. As expected, the GG SCI version is upgraded to 19.1.
The next step is to decide which trail file format should we use in the upgraded system. The basis for taking this decision is easy. We must keep the existing trail file format release, which is 12C, in the following cases. If the current system is not receiving trail files from a Golden Gate 12C system, if the current system is not sending trail files to a Golden Gate 12C system, or if there is a possibility that the current system will be connected to a Golden Gate 12C system in the future. Otherwise, you can make the processes create a trail file with the upgraded format release. By default, if we just start the processes, they will keep the existing trail file format release to 12.1. They will not use the 19C format. In my tutorial, I will demonstrate how to upgrade the trail file to 19C. If in your case you want to use the 12C format, you only need to start the processes and nothing more than that. To make the extract process create a new trail file with the new release format, you should alter the process with the option ET rollover, just as demonstrated with the code in the screen. The output of the alter command is telling us that we should alter the pump process so that it reads from the new generated file. And that's what I'm going to do soon. Now we can start the extract process. The process is running fine. Let's verify that the new trail file format is of release 19.1 In my case, file of sequence number 2 is the new file produced by the extract process. Let's check its release number. The env command output shows that the file format is 19.1. Now we should alter the pump process so that it reads from the new file. Before I start the pump process, let me go to the target system and check the trail files received over there before the upgrade. The latest sequence number of the trail files at the target system is the sequence number 2. Let's start the pump process now. The pump process is running fine. At the target side, two trail files produced. They are of sequence numbers 3 and 4. Let's check their format release number. As expected, their format release number is 
we should alter the replicate process so that it starts reading from the first new release trail file format. In my case, it is the trail file of sequence number 3. Then I can start the replicate process. The process is running fine, and it has read the received trail files up to the end of the latest received file. Just to verify everything is running good, I will have a look at the ggserr.log file. No error or warning message reported in the log file. Finally, to verify the configuration is running as normal, I will insert a row in a replicated table at the source database and verify it gets replicated into the target database. The row is seen in the target database. Now I can say the upgrade is successfully finished. And that's it for this tutorial. In this tutorial, we have learned that Oracle Golden Gate upgrade can be implemented by stopping the Golden Gate processes, upgrading the existing Oracle Golden Gate homes, and starting the processes back again. We also have learned that we should make a decision about which trail format release will be used in the upgraded system. We can upgrade the format to release 19C or we can keep the existing trail file format unchanged. In all cases, for upgrading Oracle Golden Gate in production systems, always refer to the upgrade documentation first. There are a few cases where the upgrade procedure should be tailored from the procedure demonstrated in this tutorial. Finally, as always, if you want to obtain more information about working with Oracle Technologies, consider attending my courses offer at my website, amidbaraka.com. Thanks for staying with me. See you in another video.